You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm here with a very special guest, Ryan Haddon. Ryan is a certified life and spiritual coach clinical hypnotherapist, and certified meditation teacher with over 16 years of experience with clients around the world. A sought-after public speaker for corporate retreats, such as the International Talent Agency, CAA, and wellness events for visionary women, as well as taught meditation for the U.S. government sector event. Wow, I would love to hear about that. (laughs) <laughs> Ryan does private workshops such as stepping into your purpose, the work life balance, and finding your center. She is also the in house life coach for Courtney Kardashian's website, Poosh, um, where she has written more than 50 mind body spirit articles. She writes for other publications such as Mind Body Green, Authority Magazine, and Parents Magazine. She has been on dozens of podcasts speaking about relationships, self development, and a purpose-driven life, which is my like passion. And you're a busy girl. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So Ryan, one of the things we ask all of our guests to do is share their story of hope. I think our journeys are so powerful and I think that they're meant to teach others as well as us. So do you want to share your story of hope with us today? Story of hope. Let's see. I think we all have our stories of hope. You know, I think we're all on our journey if we're worth our weight and salt. And anyone tuning in today has probably had a rocky road to sort of want to change things and become more holistic or has had to, you know, devolve in some way and go off the side path to explore other avenues and then come back to center. I think we all are that. If one story comes to mind, um, I can only really right now what's coming to mind is my own story truly is that I had a, um, an addiction almost 18 years ago that I got sober. And, um, that was a huge story of hope for me because I went from a hopeless, pitiful state, uh, as they say of, um, demoralizing, incomprehensible pain to one day to the next, just getting spit off of that roller coaster and moving into a new template, a new blueprint for living. And if ever, if you know anything about walk-ins, if ever there was a, a, a case for a walk-in, I might be that because it truly, truly was um, nothing short of miraculous, but I did do a lot of hard work. So that is sort of what I lead with. I'm not a, an addiction coach or specialist, but I, I have that in my story. And it serves me really well as I show up for people because I understand that pain can be a touchstone. It doesn't have to be, but um, certainly once you become more conscious, less and less we need the pain to redirect us and more and more we can start to feel that discomfort from being out of alignment. So it doesn't require bottoms or as painful, if if you will. And um, I think when you're tuned in and you start to tune into, oh, this doesn't feel right to me anymore and you become that voice that you are constantly clicking into versus externally focusing on what other people need you to be, then um, it becomes easier, if you will. Doesn't, life doesn't get easier, but it becomes easier to read what's happening and how you feel and to intuit and trust the journey as it's unfolding. That, you know what? That is so true. We literally have been given this beautiful gift of knowing already. Like we have this intuitiveness and we will poo poo it away. Like, no, or I don't really want to do that. And we were just talking. I, and I was just saying that I've learned that when a universe opens a door for me, I walk through it because I know it might not be easy. It might be scary, but there's something amazing there and I want to experience it. So life's all about experiences, even the bad ones. Yes. Oh my gosh. We're made up of the sum of all our parts, right? It's, we hit a certain age when I were just talking about our ages before this and You know, it's like I wouldn't I look back on my timeline and there were so many versions of me on the timeline and I knew what I knew on that. And I look back with a lot of affection for uh, the parts of when I was seeking in places that didn't have solutions. And I um, I have so much, you know, what a dear warrior 
you know, I look back and think, wow, how courageous, how brave to try all these different ways to try to get to this place that I am now. Like I'm the woman that I always wanted to save her back then. I have become that woman that she needed. And I love that because I wasn't actually on duty for myself most of the time. Uh, it seems like we never are, right? Like we're the <laughs> last person that we nurture and give love back to, which is so weird to me. I had a friend the other day saying, my husband never tells me that I'm beautiful anymore or that I look and I'm like, why are you waiting for someone else to validate you? Get your butt in the mirror and tell yourself, like you don't have to wait for someone else to give you that validation. That's true. It's true. Well, we're so externally focused and that's our matrix that we live in, right? There's always something outside of us that holds the keys to the kingdom. And when you finally unhook from that matrix, if you will, and say, there is no rescue party coming, there's no relationship that's going to solve it. There's no bank account. There's no, you know, weight on a scale, all of the different ways that we have these checks and balances of what success is and how we deem ourselves, you know, um, worthy or that this is what is dictating the quality of our life when we can sort of let to let that un, let all those things go and start to become that person for ourselves then all those other things just become fun then we can enjoy the matrix and play in it and it not playing us so i think that's the empowerment that i'm that i'm talking about here kind of got goosebumps <laughs> so one of the things i wanted to ask you is how are you how are you showing up now and changing that and allowing women and I'm, I'm assuming you work with men as well but how are you helping them discover that journey and recognize those things that they already have in existence and one of the things you talked about was making kind of a, a map a roadmap and I'm all about mindset. And I keep telling your brain has no idea. It doesn't make a map on its own. You're literally created with your words, with what you're feeding it. And so why not feed it the roadmap to where you really want to be? That's right. That's right. It's so true. Um, and, and so many times we think someone else has been given the manual for life and we haven't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that trips us up well, looking at someone else and what they're doing and comparing. And somehow when, when you understand that you are creating that, like you said, it gives a tremendous amount of responsibility. And that's also terrifying for people too, because then they're not a victim anymore. And that you have to change that narrative of like, oh my God, I'm responsible for everything I'm calling in. There is some karma. There are some things from other times that we might have to work through. <laughs> but at the same time, we're also responsible how we show up for it, right? And our take on it and our, our way that we walk through it and manage it and, um, be available to it. So those are things that we we have in our power to to do. And that actually makes our life feel more conscious. So how do I help people get that roadmap? Well, it starts with a relationship to ourselves. So what is that? What are you marinating in? How do you speak to yourself? What are the things that you disown? What are your assets? What are your liabilities? So they're all kind of things where we start in our coaching process together. It's like, let's take a good inventory of where you are and where you've come from. And then let's see from there, we're going to figure out where you're going. And then from there, I'd like to grow out your spiritual life because it's so interesting how once you start to enlarge our, your spiritual life, somehow you start to feel more connected, you care less and less where you're going. And it becomes more about how you're evolving on the way there. And you trust that you're going to become that person that you need to be, who's going to be able to handle whatever comes as your, you know, that spirituality just becomes that, that those bookends, right? So it's, um, it's kind of a combination of all of that. And then I'm a hypnotherapist. So I really like to delve into the subconscious mind, which you touched on, which are patterns, and the way that we constantly speak to ourselves. So we have this programming, and some of it's not for our highest good, it's things we've picked up along the way, and the subconscious has made our truth. And we can always renegotiate that. And that's where you find the conscious mind and the subconscious mind are in conflict because you might want one thing and then the subconscious has a different agenda. But what it's really trying to do is to move you into wholeness. They're like flags on the field, these little catchphrases that the subconscious spits, right? Like you're not enough. You'll never be able to get this done. Usually it's negative and it's constantly trying to keep you safe with its limited projections and understandings and it's um it, it can feel frustrating when you're when you're on the path and you're working really hard and then the subconscious keeps tripping you up in a sense it feels like a saboteur but it's when you pop out from the 30,000 foot view it's trying to move you into wholeness and showing you those places where there's still healing to be had 
or a renegotiation in reality. I love it. Do you um, mind like telling people a little bit about what hypnosis really is? Because I am, again, I'm in my sixties and my generation of hypnosis is the clucking like a chicken on stage, right. doing things that are embarrassing to us mm -hmm. or, and not remembering it. And that like, I wish they had never done that because I think hypnotherapy is amazing. I'm, I'm an RTT practitioner as well. Mm -hmm. And I know the power of letting you access things that you've shoved down or saw as a child, but now are an adult and realize, oh, it's not that scary. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can do this. Can you tell us a little bit about like what that looks like? So we can maybe tell people you're not going to clack like a chicken. We're not going to take control over your mind and tell you to do things that you don't want to do or even get into something really private that you don't want to share yet. Like it's really, you have the control. We're just relaxing your brain for you to access that. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about how you're doing hypnotherapy and how it's changing lives. I think you said it so beautifully and so succinctly. I think that that's all of that is true. And the stage shows are amazing and they work, but it's really about suggestibility. It's the, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So it's the degree to which you allow yourself to drop into that state. And the deeper that you, the more comfortable you feel, the more you're gonna allow yourself to drop into theta, which is that magic state where we can really make changes in the subconscious. So really it's, it feels like a guided meditation where you're aware of what you're, Aware of what's happening and sometimes you go in and out of awareness but your body's relaxed and your mind is your conscious mind is relaxed and the subconscious is always paying attention and it, the subconscious is always being hypnotized whether we like it or not it's happening when you're watching tv it's happening when you're when you're reading a book it's happening when you're spacing out it's like you're in that trance state and i think we just need to normalize this notion that we are being programmed so you might as well take it into your own hands and program it for the highest good of what you truly want how you want to move through your life how you want to have your your higher self access to access it give it permission to be able to move through you to set the subconscious aside this is how i like to work of course i work with people who have a fear of swimming or fear of flying or addictions and i love to work in that space but where i get very excited also is in working in self-esteem and working in calling an abundance mindset, working in, um, you know, seeing yourself in a new way and opening yourself up to spirit. And those are, those are the places where I feel like I see people take off in their lives. So we can do coaching sessions and that's how I usually work is a couple of coaching sessions, then the hypnosis session. And usually we come to these aha moments in the coaching, we move that right into hypnosis. And in that place to, we just close those loops those little loops, those, those, those little places where there's a catch, you know, and then we, and we align the person to what they truly, how they want to be living their life. I think that that was beautifully said. And I don't I think people really understand what your brain is taking in every day. It's taking in all the smells, all the feels, all the sounds, all the sights, like there's so much information and it's literally recording it all, but you're only retaining a small bit. So some of that gets pushed down and it needs to like be addressed. And I, I love seeing the magic that happens to people when they have those aha moments, right. Or they're like, Oh my gosh, I've been holding on to that. Someone told me one time I had a money block. I'm like, Oh no, I don't. I have money. I'll take your money. Like I don't have a block. And then I did a hypnosis therapy and there that block was my mom telling me when I wanted to go to college, that be careful. If you are too educated, you'll challenge your husband. He won't feel manly and it'll make a bad relationship. If you are too, if you're smarter than him, he won't like that. Right. And so you kind of dumb it down because you want to have a healthy relationship. She wasn't trying to hurt me. She mm -hmm. was trying to like make me have what she thought was a beautiful relationship. My husband has totally assured me that I can make all the money I want or be as smart as I need to be. And he's okay with it. <laughs> but those are the little things that we shove down that we've heard as a child or a young person. And we've like, secretly held on to that and hold ourselves back and the potential that you have when you meet someone like Ryan and you've coached through it and you've been able to access those memories and look at them now as an adult with a different perspective really opens up your world. Yeah, it does. It does. Oh, I'm so glad that you got to do that. How powerful. It was pretty powerful. Cause I was like, no, I don't have one. She's like, I hear it every single time we talk, I hear it come up. 
And it wasn't until I was able to tap into it that I saw myself. And again, that roadmap, like it's, it set a roadmap for my success growing up. Right. Because that roadmap was always there until I remapped where I wanted to go. Yeah, we, we create our own glass ceilings. It's so true. So you can only go this far. Yeah, it's absolutely true. I love it. So tell us like some of the people that you work with, what are they looking to change in their lives? Wow. Well, everyone comes in. Most people come in because they know they're not living the way they, they're usually successful. They're usually, you know, doing really well, but somehow they feel disconnected either from their purpose or they feel disconnected. They know they should love themselves more or they feel that um, the relationship they keep calling in the same relationships over and over that I find a lot or they're in a relationship and they finally keep reverting back to certain roles in the relationship like you were sharing, you know, like just these old ideas that are preventing them from moving forward and they're not evolving and they know that. So they're I think that kind of looks and feels like that most of the time. And then people who, who are work, like you, like with finances, who've been working really hard. And I just had, here's another story of hope. And I just remembered it when I said that is that I had a, I have a client who has been working in an industry for a very long time and had, you know, career goals. And we did quite a few hypnosis recordings. We did quite a, we did, probably did two or three. So let's say three. And she kept listening to them and listening to them. She said, she didn't miss a day, which is kind of extreme after th- two months listening to them. And all of a sudden this last month, she got her 10 year goals in two months for her business. It's amazing so that when we get out of our own way. Club. Yeah. In two months, she got it. She got a million dollars. That was her goal to get. And in two months. So it's, it just shows the power of massaging the subconscious and programming it for the highest good for you and removing all the blocks all those little niggling, you know, um, ideas and perceptions around things and just putting it right set for takeoff. And she's obviously, she's done all the hard work to do that too. So it's, she knows it's, it's a partnership and that's what happens when you're, you know, we're not magicians. We're, we're, we enter into partnership with our clients and it's about how much they're going to listen to these things. Like we, we crack the door open and it's how committed they are to it. It's noticing when those you know, programming comes up that's negative and changing the channel and moving it back into alignment with setting that set point of like, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. You know, the universe is supporting me and like just having, you know, those sorts of things. So I'm a little wary of the mindset part. I always bring it back to spirit and I always bring it back to anchoring into the highest good. I I always say that because I don't want to go against, I don't want anyone like, you know, I'm manifesting, 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 but if it's not for the highest good, what is the point? So I always try to reframe this and create it into that. So it's an integrity with the rest of the multiverse, if you will. That's my spiritual piece that I always add into it. I I love that. I don't know if you remember growing up, like, I don't know if you were a girl scout or anything like that, but one of the things I always remember hearing them say is we leave this place better than we found it. And when you're working for the higher good, that's exactly what you're doing. You're making generational changes that you may never have an opportunity to see, but maybe your kids or grandkids or great grandkids are going to experience that change. So I love that you said that. One of the other things that you mentioned was it's hard work. I don't want anyone to think that you can go into hypnosis and boom, something's gone. Like I had hypnosis and I stopped doing this or I created that. It doesn't work like that. Like you have to put in the work. This is just making you aware of what that work might look like. Yes. Yes. And I do feel like most people are leveraging a lot of information and they know themselves or they've gone to therapy or they've been on the path and they're doing the meditations, they're doing the workshops, they're doing all these other things. And then hypnosis becomes this buoy underneath them. And for me personally, how I found that path is that I was in these, um, I was in the dating pool in Los Angeles and you're there. So, you know, that's ripe for lots of healing and uncovering all kinds of like things you thought you dealt with. Right. And I started seeing a hypnotherapist then, and I just started noticing it wasn't that I wasn't doing the same things. It's just that I started noticing a shift in the way I was thinking about them. And I started less get feeling less like Velcro attached to whether I was called back or not called back. It's like my, my self-worth started to click in. I was like, I actually don't care. I'm actually fine. It actually doesn't even matter anymore. Like, those that's where you see oh my gosh this is really powerful at the same time i was still doing my meditations i was still being conscious i was still journaling i was doing you know um going to my 12-step groups i was doing i was doing the work 
you know, exercising, taking care of my body, doing all of that, but that piece clicks into place and everything starts to move around on the board a little bit. And the subconscious is that key. And hypnosis isn't the only way to access. So I just want to say, if you're not open to hypnosis, there's plenty of other places that you can um, address the subconscious mind. It doesn't have to be, you know, through, through this one modality. By the way, living in Los Angeles and working with a lot of celebrities, I will tell you that that you have to have very thick skin, like very thick skin. You're either to this, not enough of that. You're constantly being picked apart and diagnosed for whatever part you might be running for. And people have very unusual standards here in Los Angeles in the dating pool. It's very unique. And um, it's hard. It's super hard to not walk away without a bunch of dings in your armor and not take it personal. That's right. And I, I know a lot of celebrities, that is one of the reasons they self-medicate. They self, like they, they try to push down those, those rejected feelings because how many times do you go out on an audition or, or, you know, even a date and you're like, that didn't work. <laughs> And you yes. take it as a rejection. It's a big hit on your armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I think dating consciously is like the master class. <laughs> because you're truly having to self-soothe and having to learn tools to be able to hold your sovereignty and also evolve and trust that what's meant for you will find you. And that was one of the messages that I used in my, for my own subconscious, that he's making his way to me. And I trust the divine timing. That was one of those phrases. Those are, you know, in hypnosis as hypnotherapist, you know, you, you get these phrases and those are the things that we repeat. And then you're repeating them in hypnosis and then you're repeating them when you're driving your car and they pop up, you know? And so I would say that and every time I'd go on a bad date, I remember he's making his way to me and it's happening in divine timing. And I, or I trust divine timing, you know, and I'd say things like that. And then it would, I'd feel like my whole blood pressure drop and I'd click right back into my center again. And so it felt like these, these life rafts, but everyone's got to find how that works for them. So because I opened up and grew so much from it that I, I said, one day I'm going to do this. And I literally wept when I got my hypnosis certification. I was the only person there just crying, weeping over the certification. So I'm like, this is going to help so many people. And I'm so excited that I get to bring this. And you're right, we do have to push up against all these preconceived notions. And you have a lot of people who have control issues because they've gotten this far in life with controlling and managing everything. And then they come into this space with me and I'm sure with you where you're just like, it's time to let go. You know, it's time you've come as far as you can with the tools you have well done. Let's try something else. Surrender doesn't mean giving up. It means letting go and let's see what happens, how things can get moved around on the board with you not holding so tightly, right? So these are some of the spiritual tenets, but hypnosis is one of those because they have to take that leap of closing their eyes and dropping into that space and being guided and, and led. And so you build that rapport, you build that trust. And I think most people know they can read at this point who is in integrity. And um, I'm grateful that people take that leap with me. It's an honor. I think you're beautiful. I think that what you're saying, like my spirit is like jumping with joy right now. I hope that it, that it's touching all of you. And one of the things that you just commented on, and I know that there's going to be a lot of people, cause I am of that age range were manifesting or saying those things to herself was just stupid. Like it was dumb, but I learned the power of opening that door and reminding myself there's no hurry. It'll come when it's time. And that just made me take a big sigh of relief that there's no pressure on me, right? That the universe is sending me everything I need exactly when I need it. I don't need to rush it. And I've never gone without, like, <laughs> I've always had an abundance of everything that I've ever needed when I needed it. And so I have learned that I do the same thing. I even pull cards for myself when I'm struggling with something. And right there is that perfect message. And I post it like right on my work board. So that every time I'm like, I forget, I look over, I'm like, nope, I got this. It's coming. I feel it. So I love that you were sharing that. It's hard to do though. Sometimes it's hard to let go of that trying to make the manifestation happen instead of being allowing it to come the way it needs to come. Yeah. That really is a dance of doing the footwork because we have to do everything. It's not like, I think some people look, look at from the outside in and they go, Oh, you're just sitting on your couch going, God's going to figure it out for me. Like, and I'm just going to manifest into a vision board and it's coming. It's like we touched on earlier. It's a bit of both. 
It's a bit of, you know, singularly choosing the same thing over and over again without unwavering. I mean, even if you waver, you go back to that set point of like, it's happening. This is what I'm choosing. I'm choosing love. I'm choosing the highest vibration of love. I'm choosing abundance. I'm choosing self, you know, acceptance. I'm choosing no matter what, even if I veer off a little bit, I'm going to click back. This is the path and choosing that over and over again, and then keep turning up over to something greater and saying, this is the best I can see with the limited purview that I have. If you've got something better, please take it, navigate it. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep moving my, I'm going to keep moving these pieces forward. And then I turn the rest over to you, the, the timing of it, the how of it, all of those parts and pieces, instead of trying to control and manage all of it. Right. Do you see that difference? It's such a subtle dance. And even if you're seasoned on the path, you could get tripped up in that dance. Like, am I working so, too hard? Am I muscling my way through this too much? Or is this me, you know, um, taking steps forward, right? So that's something I, we also, I talk about with a lot of high functioning people of like, when do you stop? When do you relax back and trust the timing of it? At what point is that, right? It's a point of grace is what it is. So, um, Anyway, these are beautiful conversations and I love having them with you all. It's nice. <laughs> I a love it. In the afternoon. Yeah. I was literally obsessing with you before we got on here because I always go and do my research and check some things out. And I noticed on your website, you have a free guided hypnosis. Um, and so by the way, that's the only way I learned to meditate is I had to do a guided hypnosis to get my brain mm -hmm. to sort of slow down take a breath and get into a more relaxed state. Cause it's very hard for people like me, whose brains are like constantly like how much longer has it been too long? Oh, I got to scratch my nose. What is it? Do I start right. over? Oh, I'm thinking something right now. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't working. Yeah. I should so, do the laundry. Yeah. 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 Not only did it make the, the experience of meditating beautiful for me, but I didn't get a chance to get to download it and listen to it, but I definitely would suggest all of you go see what that looks like and get comfortable with with maybe that experience and seeing how that can open up a beautiful life for you. Cause at the end of the day, what do you want? You want to thrive in the moment that you're in right now. That's all we have. That's mm -hmm. guaranteed to us is the right now. And so why not thrive in that beautiful space? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's for you. Go ahead and jump into the website and take advantage of it and see how it feels. Enjoy it. Right. Thank you, Ryan. How can people connect with you? Well, I'm usually on Instagram. That's my favorite spot these days. And I write a lot of blogs there. It's not even, it's not bloggy, but that's where I end up blogging. So please come over to Ryan Haddon coach. And then of course my website will explain how I work and how you can work with me. And I'd love to meet you. So come on over. Great. Well, we're going to put all of those links just in case you missed that in the show notes, you can just connect with her right away. I'm definitely going to put the link to her website because you're going to want to go try the um, self-guided hypnosis and see what it feels like for you and get comfortable with it. Cause it's kind of amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today, Ryan. Thanks, Shana, thank you. Thanks for listening to the, Oh, my health. There is hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google play, or listen there. So you'll never miss an episode while you're at it. If you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.